today we're going to look at a new version of one of my favorite closed back headphones the dan clark audio aeon 2. now we've got the aeon 2 noir here and it's not just the color that's changed there's a couple of changes under the hood so to speak that could make these the ultimate portable mix headphone that you can take with you as the world starts to unlock and we all start to move about again the original Aeon 2 was awesome because it's so portable and lightweight. It's one of the lightest planar headphones in a closed back, especially that I've ever tried. It's immensely detailed, but it did need a bit of an EQ tweak to uh, get the best out of it. The Noir, actually, it's a lot closer to our ideal target. It's, if you are like me, over 40, Actually, it could be really excellent for you because the treble is slightly pronounced and forward, but it means that hi-hat positioning is particularly easy and the level of detail certainly hasn't changed between the two models, but it's just all become a lot more even. It's a lot like the EQ that I was putting onto the original version. So it's an awesome little change and it's happened in two ways. Firstly, there's a slightly different driver that's in there. And secondly, it's actually the pads that have changed. So what these are what we call semi-fenestrated. And that basically means it's got holes in, but only in part of the um, ear pad. So you can see here, half of it has holes and then the back half is solid. The difference that that and the new driver has made is just wonderful. And we'll take a look in a minute on the graphs and see actually what that has done to the frequency response. But if you have got an original set of Aeon 2s, then you can also benefit by upgrading the pads to the semi-fenestrated ones and you get a... Um, a much improved um, upper mid range and treble presentation. Now, before we go and look at the graphs, I want to point out something. They might look a little bit different. Ah, it's because we have this little fellow. This is the Grass 43AG measurement ear and it's going to give us a lot more accurate readings than the previous mini DSP unit. And it should just unlock the last bit of detail and accuracy that we really need to be adjusting the headphones and analyzing them correctly. So if the graph looks slightly different to last time, then don't worry about that. It's just because we've significantly improved the measurement setup. So let's take a look at the graphs and these are compensated. So the ideal thing that we should see is a straight line. So the more that they deviate from a line horizontally is the less accurate it is. There's a few caveats to that. Um, these are compensated. This is based on the Harman hybrid curve which is kind of a mix and match version of their three curves that they've done for headphones um, and it's a little bit more suitable for the studio than the latest one because I felt that that had far too much bass for it it was much more of a listening curve than a production one but you can see here basically there's a peak in the bottom end and then you've got this area here and this basically compensates for the anatomy of the ear so if i turn that off then you can see actually what the raw um result is so you've naturally got this lift here and you've naturally got this bump here so actually the noirs follow this 
um, very closely. I've put the compensation back on here. And what I want to first show you is actually the difference that it makes in positioning and how important that is. Now, on most closed backs, you do get a bit of movement. So dependent on where it is on your head and quite, you know, if it's just twisted one way or another, it does make quite a considerable difference and a lot more than uh, quite a few of the open backs. So if I swap over onto this view, you can actually see. So there's four different positions and you can see here that um, it, all the peaks are in the same position. It's just that the intensity of them is different dependent on the positioning on your head. So there's quite a lot of movement in some of them. Um, um, Always what we're looking for is kind of to average these out and to have one that's kind of in the right position on your head. And it's that fine tuning that you, you should definitely do if you're using a pair of closed back headphones with some piece of reference material that you know really well. So let's swap back over onto my single view. And you can see here that actually this is pretty good. If I put a line through the center of this, so much of this is so close. I mean, that's only a dB off here. That's all absolutely bang on the money. And then you get a little bit of variability up in the high um, treble region. There's a couple of things which I'll point out on the way. But essentially, with a little bit of a tweak, it's already really good to start with. We can get it looking more like that. Now, uh, there's a few things here. This dip at 9, 10K is actually a reaction based on the interaction of the cheek and the measuring device. It's definitely uh, something that you ignore. So we know that that's going to happen. You want to look at what it's like around it. So on either side, if they're both high, chances are that you need to turn both of them down a little bit. Um, and if those two peaks are lower, then they all need to come up. Um, but that's just a interaction with the measuring device. But we know about that, so it's there. This peak um, also doesn't EQ out all that well. Um, I was putting a lot more into it than I was actually getting to shift. And when you listen to it, it wasn't really making all that much um, importance. And I think a lot of that is based on the just fine tuning that positioning as well. So we try not to over EQ areas if, you know, um, you're putting on... 2 dB and you're only noticing it going up 0.5 or something, then it's not a good idea to keep pushing it because actually there's something else going on there and the EQing isn't taking at that point. But other than that, look at that. That is absolutely superb um, across the entire frequency spectrum. And yes, you've got a little dip here right in the top, but I mean, that's 14, 15 K. Um, we tend not to do anything in that real high treble region. I'm just going to leave it alone. One, I can't hear above 15k because I'm in my mid 40s. And um, essentially, um, just letting that go. The Harman curve dictates that it actually should drop off and these would be fairly loud, but studio monitors have got a more intense treble than people seem to like listening to music with. You want that detail. You want that hi-hat positioning. You want it very crisp and exact and slightly, slightly exaggerated. Um, but it sounds like monitors. That I'm really happy with. The, the balance and the hi-hat positioning on the Aeon Noir is absolutely outstanding. The red Aeon 2 can also be upgraded by swapping out the ear pad to the same one that's used on the Noir. Now, we can have a look here. I've got the graph up for the standard, and now let's add on 
the new pad over the top. And you can see there how much more even it is. Let's just stick our sort of central line going through it. It's got shot of this area here, about 1K, that's all evened out. The bumps here at 2K, um, that's really uh, reduced. And it's just a lot smoother through that treble area here. Definitely worth a uh, an, an upgrade. I've done mine. It's not going back. Um, this is essentially amazing. It's like doing the EQing on it. It just tidies up the entire headphone. If we compare the red Aeon 2 with the new pad with the Noir, um, you can't see it too clearly off this graph. Um, but the Noir definitely has a bit more treble um, presence. I think possibly this sort of 6K peak. And it's got definitely a little bit more in that sort of air region, sort of 12K-ish. Um, and again, it just means that I found the Noir more appealing to me, being in my mid-40s. Um, if I was younger the red Aeon 2 with the pads would definitely be the one that I went to because I think I'd find the Noir slightly abrasive um, if you are sort of um, sensitive to, to treble. Um, the red one with the pad swap is possibly the way to go. Very kindly, Mark, the distributor, did send me over a pair of Deconi pads for the Aeon 2 as well. These are the hybrid ones with the velour front on them. I very much prefer the feel and um, the sort of sweat resistance compared to the standard leather pad. But as you can see here, there's quite a bit of a difference in the tonal balance. So it's bringing up that sort of high mid-range treble area although it does smooth over this bump really well and that's that's a massive bonus um, what the no, what you will notice here is the lower end is just a few dbs lower that's sort of three two three four db lower now that's not much of a problem it will eq up um, and it does eq up really well so if you found that they were a little bit bass heavy and you preferred it a little bit lighter, um, if you tried that, then definitely I'd say that these um, hybrid pads would be something that you wanted to try out. Um, I've had a great response with them. And like I said, the actual feeling of the Velour is, is lovely for hours on end. And it's certainly a little bit less sweaty than... Um, the leather not that it's a particular problem but obviously if you're in a hot climate and stuff um, it might be a little bit more comfortable for you so what's the bottom line if you have got the aeon 2s already then certainly go and swap the pads it's a lovely increase in the upper mid range and they're just beautiful if you are under 40 especially if you're closer to 20 than 30 um, then you may actually prefer the red aeon 2 with the pad swap to the black aeon 2 noir the treble is a little bit sharper and um just f a little bit more forward i love it i think hi-hat positioning is really easy with it but this is um, coming down to sort of personal preference and really how battered your ears are. However, it really is almost a perfect traveling mix headphone. Although it is more sensitive than the older Aeon 2, you do really need a amp to drive it properly. If you have got something like a rack mount Apollo X unit, a merging Anubis or the RME ADI-2 DAC, uh, they're all perfect for driving it that you won't have a problem. But most interfaces haven't got enough juice to really get the best out of this. Picking up something like one of those or uh, the excellent little iFi Zencan is a great bet to get the best 
out of these headphones. All in all, it's another winner from Dan Clark, especially if you're a little bit older, that treble presentation will really suit you down to the ground. If you've got any other questions on headphone mixing or anything else in general, then please hit me up. If not, we'll see you for another video again soon. <laughs>